Uh, we love to laugh liberally, but we can be serious too. And we have a very special guest, a couple of special guests tonight, and they are from the world of journalism. Now our good friends uh, at Drinking Liberally, who are so supportive, and many of you are here tonight, and we really appreciate that, are used to having guests like this, so we're not trying to tread on Drinking Liberally's turf, but uh, we can think too, just because we're comics, doesn't mean we don't have a serious thought now and then. And our first guest is Pamela Powers Hanley, who many of you know and read regularly with Pamela Hanley. Pamela is a Tucson-based writer and political activist, Ms. Hanley is a regular contributor to the Blog for Arizona, the Huffington Post, the Tucson Citizen as well, and she recently covered the Democratic Convention for the Huffington Post. I'm sure many of you read her posts. And she's here tonight to share some observations about the convention, and I did tell her that I would ask her what happened that she thought was funny at the Democratic Convention. So without further ado, would you please welcome our first guest, Pamela Powers Hanley. Well, thanks for having me here, Phil, and uh, one of the first things that everybody asks me about when they hear that I went to the convention was, did you have fun? And I did have fun in a obsessive, compulsive, work from 6 a.m. to midnight kind of way, tromping around in the rain and things like that, but it was a blast, and uh, I'm glad I'm here to tell you about it. So, uh, the other thing that everybody asked me is uh, how I got to go to the convention, all expenses paid uh, by the Huffington Post. And that's because I won a contest. Ariane Huffington had a contest, and I was one of eight winners nationwide to go to the uh, either the DNC or the RNC. And lucky for me, I didn't get the booby prize. I got to go to the Summer of Love Fest for Barack Obama rather than the lying, rying train wreck in Tampa. Right? So it, it was great. It was like, like I said, it was like the Summer of Love, but with better jewelry, better parties, more booze, and less marijuana. Right? And so, um, it was it was really cool. The other thing is that like before I went, I was like obsessing, you know, just ask my poor husband. I was ding, 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 with all these questions in my head about, you know, was it gonna rain? Was I gonna get wet? Was my hair gonna get frizzy? Did I need better shoes? Was my backpack gonna be too heavy with three cameras and two lenses and a flash attachment and chargers and my cell phone and my umbrella and my hat and my water bottle? Was I going to meet Ariana Huffington? Was I going to get interviewed by Comedy Central? And the answer to all those questions was yes. I got frizzy, I got wet, I got tired with my backpack, I got to meet Ariana, who was a doll. I got interviewed by Comedy Central, which I was really scared I was going to be as dumb as Michael Hicks, but I wasn't. So <laughs> anyway, um, one thing that um, with the contest winners, they picked eight of us, like I said. I have no idea how they picked us, but there was two who were over uh, 55 and two who were under 25, and the rest were in the middle, and there was three women, and there was one Mexican guy, and there was two black people, and there was one guy who was Jewish and gay, but there's nothing wrong with that, right? Uh -huh. <laughs> And there was a tap dancer. And what was really weird was I was really the only blogger, you know. It was a citizen journalist contest, but I was really the only person who had been a political blogger for a while. So anyway, we, I took the tickets and I was glad to go. And uh, we arrived in Charlotte on Sunday before Labor Day. And one of the first things I wanted to do was cover the Bradley Manning Occupy Charlotte dance. And so this uh, videographer and I thought, well, this would be cool. You know, we get pictures of old hippies dancing in the park, you know, for Bradley Manning, but we never found them. But what we did find down in, in downtown Charlotte was Nancy Pelosi, which was kind of cool. So anyway, Monday was Labor Day, and they had what they call the Carolina Fest. And I thought this was going to be like, a, you know, like a street fair kind of thing, like Fourth Avenue Street Fair. But when I read the billing, it said, we're going to have two stages of music. And I thought, two stages of music? And, you know, in Tucson, we have the folk festival. It's like 10 stages, right? So two stages of music. And what I had forgotten was that Charlotte, North Carolina is actually the second largest financial center in the country next to New York City. So they have such horrible union labor laws that they have a ton of Fortune 500 companies who are headquartered there. So they have Bank of America and Time Warner and they have the East Coast Division of Wells Fargo. So that's who was at the freaking street fair. It was a corporate street fair. It was so weird. And one of the strangest displays was Duke Energy had some uh, brightly painted electric cars, so it's like, 
go green, buy more electricity, you know? <laughs> so anyway, it started to rain and I decided to bail on the street fair and I was going to meet the driver who was uh, shuttling us back and forth. And I knew that um, it was important to find a driver because our hotel was not in uptown. It was outside of town. What I didn't realize was our hotel was in South Carolina. So it was very important to meet up with the driver. And unfortunately, they gave him a street corner to pick me up at that he couldn't get to because of the Carolina Fest. So I missed the, um, the driver that night. I was forced to go to a cocktail party, right? <laughs> Duty calls. I had to go to the blogger cocktail party, and I thought, well, I don't have my little black dress, you know? I have a wet t-shirt, not in a good way, a wet t-shirt and, and my walking sandals and my big backpack and my red, wet hat and my frizzy hair. I thought, oh man, I'm going to look like a schmuck, right? I go in there, and it's all bloggers. They all look like that. They all have big hair and big coffee hats and big backpacks. I was with me head day, you know? And so, it was fun, you know, I had a couple drinks, uh, drinks on Barack Obama, and, and it was really cool that the, the campaign really reached out to alternative media, you know. They, didn't, they knew that we were going to give them different stories than what the mainstream media did, so what did they do? They bought us a couple drinks and gave us some snacks, you know. <laughs> we're easy. <laughs> so, anyway, I did meet up with Mark, the driver. I think the Huffington Post said, don't leave that old lady downtown by herself. She's going to get lost in the dark, you know. And so, I met up with Mark, the driver, you know, and after that he was like very attentive, you know, he's calling me Miss Pamela, and I'm thinking, okay, Denzel, you know, this is not a driving Miss Davy Daisy thing, you know, because he looked like an older Denzel Washington, so. But anyway, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, those were like the main days of the convention, and so Tuesday was really the only day that I actually got into the convention, even though I had plenty of credentials, right? And uh, unfortunately, Tuesday was one of those days that poured down rain, and I wore a sundress because it was hot. So I was wet, and I was in the convention, and my seats were like way up in the nosebleed. So I could see the speakers were really down there, and I could see part of their face. And anyway, it was kind of weird, and I was cold, and I had purchased this t-shirt earlier in the day. And I thought, even though this doesn't go with my green sundress, I'm cold, and I'm going to put it on, right? So it didn't help too much with the warmth, and I went down into the lobby, I bailed on the convention, because it was before Michelle spoke anyway, and I, I didn't want to hear the boring speeches. I go down to the lobby, which is where the action is, and this guy comes up to me and he says, are you a delegate? And I said, no, I'm a blogger. And he goes, you are, where are you from? And I said, I'm from Arizona. He goes, Arizona. <laughs> and he goes, do you want to talk to Comedy Central? And I said, sure. And then at that point I thought, oh man, I better not act like Michael Hicks. And I'm thinking, he's thinking, I bet she's going to act like Mike Hicks and be really stupid, right? Because so, here I was with frizzy hair and a green dress and this t-shirt on and my big backpack and my wet head, wet hair and everything. So anyway, the story that they were trying to do was about the big tent of the Democratic Party and who would you boot out of the tent, right? But I guess I wasn't funny enough because I said I would boot out the Republicans in the Arizona legislature. So anyway, you yeah, see so you guys have a plot. They didn't realize where your choice that was. So anyway, I, I did get my uh, picture taken with the Comedy Central guy, but I didn't get into the uh, into the final cut because I guess I wasn't funny enough. So anyway, Wednesday, Thursday were pretty cool. Um, I didn't get in to see Clinton again, and so mostly what I did on Wednesday and Thursday was either worked in the media center, uh, which was really cool. It's like all the media were there, you know, New York Times and Huffington Post and Washington Post and. Politico and all kinds of bloggers and foreign press and this and that. But what I did find out when I went back to the media center that night was that at 9 o'clock it was time for Beer and Beam, Jim Beam, right? Because, you know, it's a blogging, it's a journalistic tradition, right, to drink and write. So anyway, I thought, well, note to self, I'm going to have to bring some Chardonnay tomorrow night because they didn't have any wine and I don't drink beer or Jim Beam. And so, uh, again, like I said, you know, uh, Wednesday and Thursday we were trudging around and going between... Um, being out on the street and being in the media center. And what uh, Huffington Post had done was with the four off-the-bus reporters, you know, we were doing the street-level journalism. So we were out there in the rain with our cameras and our, and our video and, uh, you know, writing stories from the street level. And then they had another whole set of, of uh, bloggers who were in the media center uh, watching the speeches on TV and watching Twitter and watching Facebook and, and doing sort of internet-based journalism. So it was like a mix of what was going on on the street and what was going on on the internet. And so um, Thursday, I really tried to get in the hall for Barack Obama's speech, but again, I didn't make it. I got locked out. Um, 
I was just a few minutes late, but the security was amazing. But it was cool because the cops were actually really nice. Everybody was in such a good mood. It really was a love fest. So I did uh, a lot of video out on the street, and there were like little pockets of protesters and this and that. And so I videoed the vendors and the protesters, and there was a group of Romney people, right? So there are 10 Romney people and like 10,000 Barack Obama fans out on the street because the, his speech had been moved from the arena, I mean from the stadium to the arena. And the right wing uh, journalists, they were trying to say it was moved because he couldn't fill it. Well, there were so many people on the street, I just don't buy that. So anyway, I went up to these Romney guys, you know, and because they had signs that said, uh, that tuition debt was too high and that the Affordable Care Act was going to cost too much. And I thought, well, Romney and Ryan are not going to do them any good on those issues, you know. So I went up to him and I said, well, what do you think that, because they look like clean-cut college guys, right? What do you think that Romney and Ryan are going to do about tuition debt? Well, I don't have any comment. And I said, well, you're out here with a sign and you, you know, well, we've been being harassed all day by these people. Well, look where you are, buddy, you know. And so then the woman, this woman pipes up and she goes, well, we think they're the best choice. And I said, okay, why are they the best choice? Well, I'm not going to say anything on the record. You know, it's like... <laughs> so I decided later that they were paid to stand there, you know, and they did not say anything. And then across the street from them, they were at a really good corner because it was like right leading right into Time Warner Arena. And on the opposite corner was the legalized marijuana college students, you know. But unfortunately, by the time I was done with the Romney students, the legalized marijuana students went out for a smoke break because they weren't there anymore. So I went back into the media center then after, you know, I shot all my video and I worked on the video and watched Barack Obama on the TV like everybody else. And about midnight, we went back to the hotel. We met up with Mark, the driver. And um, I finished my blog post in the morning and uploaded my video and caught my flight back to Tucson. And I'm ready for 2016. I want to do it again. <laughs> so, and 